What's going on, snowboarders across the internet? I am Kevin, here with angrysnowboarder.com with another edition of Top 5's, the only Top 5 snowboard show. Today I'm going to be talking about my Top 5 favorite snowboard bindings for 2019. I apologize that Avery couldn't be here. This time I don't know what he has. It's green and purple and he's at the hospital and in quarantine and I think they're bringing in the FBI. And by FBI I mean female body inspectors. I don't know why that's relevant. Maybe Avery's a female. Rolling straight into the list here with number five, and that is the Ride Rodeo Limited. Got a new high back and a new ankle strap. Frame and foot that are basically the same, but that new ankle strap is flippable, and that's awesome. I like flippable ankle straps. It allows you a little bit more customization to your bindings and not really have to change anything. It's an added bonus without making the binding more complicated. I like that every time. The new high back is I don't know, it's just a new high back. It's just kind of there, but it does its job. It works well. It's supportive when it needs to be. It's a little more flexible up top, so you get a little bit more freestyle tweakability. The flippability to the strap is it's a little bit softer on one bottom, or like bottom half stock, I think is how it comes, and a little bit stiffer on top stock. So you can flip that, and that allows the binding to feel a little bit softer straight forward. So it's not quite as responsive, but maybe rides a little bit better for park if you're looking for like that little bit of a softer feel. Uh, overall, it hasn't changed drastically, but that's part of the reason it stays in this top five is because I think it's a really versatile binding that you can put on just about anything. Number four is the Burton Malavita. Now, this binding literally didn't change at all except for the toe strap. I talked about this in the last one. This binding still made the list, but the toe strap was strange. I never had a real true issue with it, but I could see it be maybe a problem with some weird boot shapes out there or toe box shapes. The new one is a lot more of your garden variety split toe strap with some 3D shaping to it. It works. It doesn't fit weird, and it stays on your boot. So, not really much to talk about with this. It's your Malavita. It's your crush all. You can put it on any board out there. It is Burton's workhorse in their binding one. And it has a better toe strap. Number three, right in the middle. This one almost didn't make the list entirely because to be completely honest, I don't know if it's actually in the line for 2019, but I have a pair and they're amazing and I'm really hoping they're in the line for 2019. It's the Burton Clutch. Basically, the Burton Clutch was a limited release binding this year that was more or less just the custom frame and straps with a diode high back. And the diode's not in the line anymore, but that's what they did with it. They put a diode high back on a custom. And that sounds really weird. And it kind of is. But towards the end of the season, I basically, as I started breaking down all my boards and putting everything away, that was one of the bindings that I actually kept out and rode a lot. And I basically just kept riding that binding because it's really good. It does everything I need it to. That softer frame is nice underfoot. It allows you to ride it on a lot of different boards, but then you have that really stiff supportive high back to get into any board. So I can put them on something super stiff. I can put them on jib decks. They're awesome. I really like that binding a lot, and it's on this list because it's just that good. So if you find a set, grab some, because I don't actually know if they exist anymore. All the way to number two here, and two and one, bit of a hard decision for me because they were both almost even. Number one edged out just a little bit, but that's for in a second. Right now we're talking about two, and number two is the Arbor Cypress. This didn't make the list last time I was doing this video, and this time it did because they changed the ankle strap, and it is by far my favorite ankle strap in the entire industry now. It is of the new construction of fully injected synthetic rubber plastic, whatever you want to call it, and it has their kind of double asymmetrical build to it. So it has a little bit of bulge to the outside and top and a little bit of a bulge to the inside on the bottom. It just fits so well. It's super comfortable. It disappears on your, on your boot and it just does everything you need it to. It has the structure to drive into it, but it has a little bit of flexibility to move around on top of the board. It's just the most versatile and most comfortable and most just perfect strap really that I've been in in a long time. So that's really the big reason that this binding got up in there. And the Cypress out of their two models, Cypress and Hemlock. The Cypress is the stiffer one. It's got a little bit of a taller high back, a little bit stiffer high back. It's a little bit more geared towards that all mountain crusher rider. Cypress, the whole Arbor binding line in fact, has mini discs and they're using what they're calling their X frame. 
Basically, it's an X of rubber underneath the binding, coupled with an disc that allows the binding to flex with the board a lot better. And so it's of that new kind of concept that allows the boot and binding to act as one unit on top of the board instead of the board and binding acting as one unit. It works well, it rides super smooth. They're the type of bindings you can be in for eight hours straight and they help save your foot. It helps save foot fatigue having that giant rubber gasket on there. So all the way to number one, the Rome Katana. Now, this was a really close competitor to number two, the Arbor Cypress. What edged out the Katana over the Cypress was the level of adjustability. There is nothing you can't adjust on the Katana. You can adjust the cant of the high back, your forward lean, your strap angle adjustment. It's got the pivot mounts on the side, so you can change whether the strap actually mounts to the frame, high, low, forward, back, at an angle, whatever which by far is my favorite buying adjustment out there. I've got in-step issues, so the fact that I can run those post mounts straight up and get that strap off the top of my foot is amazing. The big reason that I really like the Katana this year and why it gets the number one spot is they changed the high back on it. So it's got a much stiffer, much more supportive high back compared to that old. The old Katana was a really, really good binding and it was very much your Swiss Army binding where you could put it on just about anything and it rode pretty well, but that high back it was just a little soft in my opinion for where that binding really should have sat. So they stiffened it up, they gave it a whole new shape, it's super clean looking, it rides amazing. I rode it in Canada for three days straight, I rode it on the Alec, I rode it on their PAL Moontail in 57, I rode it on Blur and the National. So I've got a pretty good gamut of boards that I put that binding on and it was flawless on all. The D3O foam underneath it makes that binding ride super smooth, it soaks up shocks really well, both high vibration stuff and big impact. And overall, it's just it's just a super, super good binding. Thanks for watching. This has been me, Kevin, with my top five favorite old mountain bindings. Did your favorite binding not make the list? Well, if it didn't, there's a good reason. It's not in my top five, so deal with it. Click the subscribe button. Make sure you're hitting the bell so you know when these videos are actually coming out. And check out Angry Snowboarder VIP. It's a great way to support us and keep these videos coming to you.